So in all the seed starting that I've done over the years, the single biggest factor that has an impact on your plant going from surviving to thriving is the amount of light that it receives. And so today I'm going to walk us through three different lighting environments so you can see how big of an impact that has on your plant and ultimately ensure that your plant babies are getting enough light this season. So as we get started here, if you have any questions, please ask those down in the comments. I start my day by answering each and every one of them, so you're gonna get a response from me super, super quickly. Now for today, I really wanna dive into what impact does lighting have on our plant babies? And so to bring this to life, about five weeks ago, I started three sets of seeds. And the way that I went about starting these seeds was the exact same as in our video focused on the simplest method to start seeds. So if you wanna check that video out, the link to it is up above here. Now, once I had prepared the seeds in the worm casting seedling mix ensured that it was nice and moist i then moved them to three unique environments so the first set of seeds i put upstairs into my windowsill that receives the most natural light the second set i put underneath a grow light that i used in my first year of starting seeds and the third set i put into my seed starting station under the grow light that i now utilize for starting seeds so what i want to do next is head to each of those environments to check in on how the plant babies are doing with the amount of light they're receiving all right so our first set of plants here which are in the windowsill as we can see this is what we call being leggy look at how long the plant is growing and how each one of them is leaning towards the window what it's basically telling you when it does this is hey i'm not getting enough light so rather than putting on foliage growth I'm gonna put on stem growth to try and grow closer to where the light source is. And that's a classic sign that it is not getting enough light. Now, why might that be the case? Well, we look outside, it's overcast. There's not even any direct sun coming through right now. And then even on sunny days, what I've found is that it's sunny for a little bit, but then maybe some clouds roll through. And then as soon as those clouds have passed, Next thing we know, the sun's starting to dip behind a house or the hills because the days are still so short in the winter time now. And so one thing that I like to have on hand for light is this little app called Light Meter. And what it does is it tells me how many lumens are coming through right now. And so when we look at this, there's about a thousand or so, which really pales in comparison to what we're going to be seeing a little bit later on. And so the plant babies just simply are not getting enough hours of sunlight, nor the intensity to put on as much growth as possible. So now let's head downstairs to the second environment where I have the first ever grow light that I used set up over top of our plant babies. Okay, and so what we can see in this environment is that they are not nearly as leggy, but they also have not grown a ton for five weeks in. So let's grab my light meter here. And what I can see is that there's, you know, 400, 500, 600 lumens. So even less than we were upstairs in the window outside. So while it is a grow light and they are closer to the light source, they simply are not getting enough light to really be putting on good amounts of foliage growth. And so what I wanna do next is go to our third environment where I have my new grow light that I've been utilizing for the past two seasons now. Alrighty, now that is what we like to see. And so if you've watched any of the other videos that we've put together on how to go about starting seeds, you know that these babies that have been underneath this grow light in our worm casting seedling mix have really, really been thriving. And so let's go a little bit deeper into what's happening from a light perspective when we're in here. And so when I grab my light meter app and what we can see is that we are now up over 20,000 lumens. And if you're on an Apple device, there's an app called Luxmeter that I've started to play around with. I'm not as familiar with it, but the reading that it gives me is right around kind of 8,000, 9,000 Lux here. And so I'm not as familiar with that application, but I would encourage you to utilize it to familiarize yourself with whether or not your plants are getting enough light. I've been utilizing light meter more and very familiar with it. And I always look for there to be kind of at least 15,000 lumens where I'm placing my plant babies. So with that being said, I wanna grab all three, take them out to the garage so we can look at them alongside each other and make a final observation. Alrighty, so here we are. We've got the windowsill seedlings 
the old grow light seedlings and the new grow light seedlings. And so the one big takeaway from this little video and experiment is that lighting matters and lighting matters a lot. And so if there's one area that I suppose I could encourage you to make an investment into for this upcoming season, it would be into getting a good, not expensive, just a good grow light because it makes a world of a difference and it's going to put you light years ahead, pun intended, maybe, I don't know, than using a windowsill or something along those lines. But on top of that, you're also now going to be able to overwinter peppers. You could be doing microgreens, sprouts. So it opens up a whole new avenue of growing for you as well. And so the last piece is just how did I arrive at the grow light that I utilized to be growing these little seedlings? Well, I actually find all of the lighting stuff fairly overwhelming in terms of the wattage, the lumens, the light spectrum, all of those pieces of information. So what I did last year was I just bought six different grow lights, set them all up in little environments, put pieces of wood between them so that I could block each of the areas out to see how each of them performed and ultimately arrived at the one based on how the plants were growing that I liked the most. And that is the two foot Monios LED. And so if you do want to utilize the exact same grow light that I use in my seed starting station, then we do have those available in our shop. And so if you wanted to pick one or two of them up, the link to those is down in the description of this video. And the reason why I mentioned two is because it is really, really nice to have two foot grow lights because you can put one a little bit lower down for your shorter plant babies and the other one a little bit higher up for those that are either growing a little bit taller or just a little bit more mature. So folks, that's everything that I wanted to cover off on in today's video on lighting. Now, if you want to see my step-by-step -step method on how to go about growing seedlings that are growing just like this five weeks in or so, then you can simply click on this tile right here and it'll take you over to that step-by-step -step video guide on the method and the materials. Other than that, you've got everything that you need to have an amazing season ahead here. Any questions, leave those down in the comments. I can't wait to catch you on the next one and go get those hands dirty.